In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an allylic discrimination PCR assay where we use uh, Sigma extract and AM DNA that we prepared previously from plant tissue. Uh, with this assay, we'll be able to separate alleles into homozygous mutant, um, heterozygous mutant, and wild type calls. Right. And I'm going to throw away all our strip caps because it's hard to keep track of all these guys. Um, they have been spun down already. We will save this at the end, but we'll put a tape over it, um, which is a little easier to handle. A little bit ha easier to handle once you're in a in the plate format where you no longer really care about individual wells. Now we got to move one microliter of template over into this um, genotyping plate. I have to pay attention to not use these last four wells. You want to see this here? So these last four wells are our controls. We'll have two non-template controls, a wild type and an IND1, which is our mutant. Um, so I have to be careful not to pipette stuff into those. If you look on our plate here, we have nothing in there, so it's going to be hard for me to do that. Um, When working with small volumes, the, the key is to look at your pipette. If you see stuff in all the in all the pipettes, you're good. If you don't see stuff in there, that's not good. In there, I'm going to pipette up and down three times and then eject, like to the second stop, and then try to kick these guys off. And I'm going to mark. I'm going to mark every time I do one. It goes slower to mark every time that you do one, but I have found that that's, that's important for me because I would rather do this one time than two times. And we're cool. I don't think you have to record the whole thing. Now that the plate has been assembled, you need to put the optical tape on it. And uh, it can be sometimes a little hard with this particular brand to peel it apart for me, but. And we want to save the this the piece that is not sticky. Um, I'll show you why. I'm just going to put this on there pretty evenly so you cover all the wells. And then we'll use this piece here, the part that was touching the sticky part, and we'll put it on here so that we don't have to get our fingerprints and other scratches or whatever on here and we'll use this to seal it. And this is what I have found is the best way to seal a QP air plate. They have spreaders and all these things but just the human touch does seems to do a better job of sealing all the wells. Now we'll take this guy and it's pretty even. Um, we'll get it we'll get it so that um, we vortex it, spin it down, vortex it, and spin it down again. And then we have, um, you know, our templates, and we don't want to throw that away because what if we, what if we got to do this again or something like that? So we'll go ahead and and take this film, and you know, something tells me this film will actually probably work fine for the QPCR as well. We could try it one time; it's a lot cheaper. 
I'm going to just do the same trick. I'm going to seal this up. Um, and we're not going to throw this thing away until we make our final genotyping calls and we're happy with it. We don't need to do anything again. Quickly spin down this plate. Um, and then we'll mix it, and then we'll spin it down again and get it into the QPCR machine. Got to balance the centrifuge. That's good. Everything is collected on the bottom, and now we just need to we need to um, mix it well. If the template and the mix are not mixed well, what you'll what you'll have is PCR that doesn't work very well. So you want to mix until you see swirling happen. When you're well swirl, you're good. You don't want foam, but you want some swirling. And so that's what I got there. And now I'm just gonna spin this down again, just like in the last step, and then we'll, we'll do the QPCR. To our CFX, you just push that button. There is nothing manual here, it's all automatic. I still have my secondary film on there. You gotta put it, the plate in the right orientation. That means everything. It will, it will be in whatever orientation you put it in, will be the way the data will be. I spread this out, make sure it's sticky, take this away, make sure we take this away and it should look really clear in there. And ensure that I, I don't think I have any fingerprints, but in case I did, I'm gonna take a Kim wipe and I'm just gonna lightly, lightly polish it. And then we'll press the button. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. And then we start the BioRad uh, CFX Maestro. And, and then I'm going to click user to find and I'm going to say select existing and in this case we're doing a PACE assay which is a uh, allele specific uh, genotype assay and it's PACE rubble pretty easy and it has all the right stuff set in it and I'm going to click next and I'm going to then it's where you're selecting the plate first we selected the protocol now we select the plate say select I existing and I'm going to only look at FAM and HEX. This assay, we're only looking at FAM and HEX. Say open and say next. And then I'm going to say start run. And now it's going to give me an error message, but don't worry about that. Um, that's because the program has a little bug in it. And now it's going to ask me where I want to save this thing and what I want to name it. We're going to save it in raw hole. I'm going to add on the identifier. 368. Okay. Our file name should be should be our numbers of wells. So in this case it was 277 to 368. And I'm going to just say that we were looking at IND1-1. And that'll be enough information that we can easily um, easily understand what this file is. And I click save. And it, and it started. And in, an, in about an hour and 45 minutes, this will be done.